in this video we are going to look at the law of sines. In the last few sections we looked at solving right triangles and many of those concepts that we used in solving in right triangles can be used in solving what we call oblique triangles and basically that's just any triangle that does not have a right angle. Okay, So to start we'll begin by labeling our angles and sides of a generic oblique triangle and this is something you want to do for any of the problems that you're given where the sides are not labeled to begin with and that's just to keep track of which side length and which angle corresponds to each other okay so angle A, B, and C will be opposite the sides little a, B, and C respectively okay as shown in this picture here to solve we will need to know certain information and in general there are four cases in which we can solve an oblique triangle. In case one we have one side and two angles. It does not matter which angle and which side you have um, but usually they are situated in a particular fashion. Okay, So if I have an angle, a side, and then another corresponding angle or I have a side and the next two angles then with that information I can solve the triangle. Usually these are called angle side angle and side angle angle. In the second case we have two sides and the angle opposite one of those sides. Okay. So again if I'm looking at my A, B, and C, if I know side B and C then I have one of angle B or C. So in this case we're looking at a side side angle. In the third case we have two sides and the included angle. So this is a little different than side side angle. Okay, And we'll notice here that it's the angle for the side we don't know. That corresponds to the side that we don't know. Okay. And then in the last case we're just given all three sides. And this is known as side, side, side. Now these first two cases can be solved by the law of sines. So if we know an angle, a side, and an angle, or a side, an angle, and an angle, or a side, a side, and an angle, so again that angle being opposite one of the sides, then we can use the, the law of sines. Okay? The law of sines basically says that in any triangle the lengths of the sides are proportional to the sines of the corresponding opposite angles. So if we're given a triangle ABC sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B which is equal to sine of C over C. So to use the law of sines we need to have two angles and a side or we need to have at least one side and its corresponding angle. So if I look at any pair of those, so sine of A over A equaling sine of B over B, if I know the two angles, then I have to know one of the two sides, um, or I need to have two of the sides and the course, at least one of the corresponding angles. So I would need to know A and B, and then maybe the sine of A. So let's look at an example. Let's solve the following triangle using the law of sines. So here we're given an angle side angle. We have angle A which is 46 degrees, the side length C which is 65, degree, 65 and angle B which is 20 degrees. So in this case because I've got two of the angles I can easily begin by finding the third angle, angle C. So angle C will be 114 degrees. Now if I notice I now know the side length C and the angle C so I have a full side of a proportion and I can use my law of sines to find the other side lengths. So let's start with side length A. So again I'm going to use two pieces of the law of sines proportion the ones in this case involving C and A. Again for C I know the angle and I know the side length and for A I know the angle so I can use this proportion to solve for the side length. So sine of 114 degrees divided by 65 will equal the sine of 46 degrees divided by A. So A will equal 65 times the sine of 46 degrees 
divided by the sine of 114 degrees. And here we can just plug this into a calculator. You do have to be careful plugging this in. Um, make sure that you include your parentheses in the correct spots and make sure that you're in degrees and not radians. So plugging in, we see that A is going to be 51.18. To find side length B, we can do the same thing, except now we'll use the angle B. So sine of C over C will equal sine of B over B. And plugging in our values, we get that the sine of 114 degrees divided by 65 will equal the sine of 20 degrees divided by B. So now we can solve for B by rewriting our expression again. So again, B will equal 65 sine of 20 degrees divided by the sine of 114 degrees. Plugging into our calculator, we get that B will equal 24.34 units. So now that we have angle C and side lengths A and B, we have solved our triangle. Let's look at another example of the law of sines. So in this case, we have another triangle ABC, where we know angle A is 80 degrees, side length B is 3.4, and side length A is 6.5. Okay. So again, we want to solve. And so here, we can start again by finding the other angle measures. So again, because I have side A and angle A, I can use that proportion to find my angle B or my angle C. So here we have the values we can plug in to solve for angle B. So rewriting our equation, we see that the sine of B is going to be 3.4 sine of 80 degrees divided by 6.5. To get angle B, we're going to end up taking the arc sine of both sides of the equation. Now again, at this point, we need to plug into a calculator and solve. And what you'll notice is when I solve this, I get the arc sine is going to be 31.01. So here we have to be a little bit careful. Now in some cases, we will solve and we can see that our angle is less than 90 degrees. And if our other angle, so in this case our angle A is also less than 90 degrees, we have to be careful that there could be more than one triangle that satisfies the information we started with. Okay? And the only way that you're going to be able to determine if there's more than one triangle, or if there's only one triangle, is to test both values. Okay? And so here we can see that B equals to 31.1. Um, the other value that we could have where sine is positive would be in the second quadrant. So we want to find the angle in the second quadrant that will give us the same value of the arc sign. Okay. So here, if we did that and took 180 minus 31.01, we see 148.99. So at this point, we would say it is possible that there are two triangles that satisfy the given conditions. To see if both triangles actually exist, we need to go a little bit further. So let's look at angle C. Now that we have angle A and we have angle B, we can subtract to get angle C. So for this first triangle, when B equals 31.01, C will equal 68.99 degrees. Okay. So here we have three acute angles to make up our triangle. That's certainly doable. Let's look at the other triangle. So if B equals 148.99, then C would equal a negative 48.99. And that's just not pos possible. We need our angles to be positive numbers. So in this case, there's only one triangle. So for that one triangle, we now have all three angles. A is 80 degrees, B is 31.01, and C is 68.99. So now we just need to find the missing side length C. So again, we can go back to our law of sines and plug in the ratios between A and C. Again, you could do B and C, but if you can use the values you're given instead of the values you found, your answers are likely to be more accurate. 
So the sine of 80 degrees over 6.5 is going to equal the sine of 68.99 degrees over C. Solving for C, we see that C will equal 61.61. .61. And so there we have our solved triangle.